I posted my first faceless YouTube video on the 21st of July, 2020. Now, since then, that channel grew to over 100,000 subscribers, got me my first YouTube silver plaque, and since then, I've scaled multiple channels that have maybe over $700,000 in revenue. In this video, I wanna share with you the five most important lessons that I learned running faceless YouTube channels for over three years now. I learned that when it comes to faceless YouTube channels, uh, Warren Buffett saying of, it's not important how hard you row, but what boat you're in, heavily applies. The niche that you're in has a lot more to do with how much money you're gonna make or for how long are you gonna make that amount of money than you think in the beginning. The reason why I make so many videos about niches on my channel and I give you guys as many examples as I can is because of this lesson. So here's why this is very important. I'll give you the example of Capitalist, right? My, my very first channel that I started, we documented it here on the channel in this video. When I first started Capitalist, I was watching main money online videos and I said, well, this guy seemed to be making money, so let me start uh, making money with it as well, right? I said like, it seems a good niche. I know a little bit about it and I just went with it. Now. It all went fine, it completely changed my life. We went from zero to $10,000 per month, made over $100,000 from that channel, got me my first silver plaque. That's how everything started. But about a year, about a year and a half into the channel, I quickly realized that it was harder and harder to continue to get views because I needed basically to came up with brand new video ideas, brand new ways to make money, brand new impossible ways to make money every time. And just there weren't that many, right? You had the PayPal games, you had the surveys, you had the websites, you have the businesses, you had this and that, you had crypto. But it, there weren't like new ways of making money. And what I saw is that again, 12 to 18 months in after starting the channel, the channel started having a small decline uh, because we weren't able to come up with as good, as new, as interesting video ideas as we were in the beginning when kind of the market was on tap. There just weren't as many ideas for that channel to be able to make money for one year, two years, three years, four years, five years to come because the content pool, the content batch was pretty limited. And instead, since then, I started channels where the content really compounds and it becomes easier and easier to come up with content because you know more, you have more leverage, you have more videos that work. It wasn't the case with that one. So again, before you start your first faceless channel, YouTube automation channel, make sure to do your due diligence, watch my videos, watch other videos about choosing your niche and make sure that it's nice. Because again, as Warren Buffett says, sometimes it's not important how hard you row, but what boat you are in. I also learned something that I now refer to as counting in hundreds. I got this from Alex Ramosi, who was talking about, you need to count in hundreds. Whenever you wanna do something, just extend your expectations. Just say, how many hundreds have I done? How many hundreds of actions, hundreds of outputs, hundreds of inputs, hundreds of activities have I done? So let me explain how this applies to faceless YouTube channel. So with my very first successful YouTube channel, it took me 107 videos before the first one, took off, went viral, made a lot of money, the channel grew and it completely changed my life. If you have the expectation that you're gonna start this business and you're gonna get rich quick overnight, make 10 videos and it's gonna blow up, you're gonna make $10,000 per month, I just don't think that's a healthy expectation to have. Now, is it not gonna happen? Well, it's not guaranteed because if you already know what it takes, you can blow up a channel from the first video, maybe from the fifth, maybe from the 10th, maybe from the 20th. But if you're a beginner, if you haven't done this before, I think setting the expectation of like, I'm just gonna make a hundred videos or I'm gonna make, I don't know, a multitude of videos, a high number of videos, and I don't expect this to work until that number or until I learn what it truly takes, that will better your journey. A lot of people look at things and expect that time will solve it. I'm not the biggest fan of just doing something and then just waiting and hoping and praying and whatever. In the beginning stages of my journey, which I think is, is one of the reasons that allow me to grow so quickly and eventually have success with this business model, I was a big believer in just doing the work and putting in the reps. I don't think that Success on YouTube has a lot to do with how much time have you been with how much time have you been on the platform. I see it as a skill deficiency, right? I, for example, in growing this channel Rasman Parachute, just don't know what it takes to get mobile videos to get a million views on a personal channel. And my plan is just to post as many of them as possible with the scope of paying off my skill deficiency. It's just a knowledge gap. I just don't know what it takes to make those videos, how to do the intro, how to do the hook, how to do the body, how to do the outro. I just don't know those things yet. And I believe that being more aggressive with the volume, just doing more, doing 100, doing 200, doing 300, will not necessarily give me the outcome, but will allow me to exercise more. And with each and every single one, I strive to be better. I'm just gonna do a high volume of things with the scope of improving myself, basically allows you to kind of shortcut the time that it takes an activity because while you are patient and while you let things happen, 
you are aggressive and you are relentless with your actions and you actually put in the work. I hope that makes sense, but again, count in hundreds, extend your expectations, and always look inwards and say, what can I do better? What can I do more? Not just say, oh, I posted the video, it doesn't work. I think the algorithm doesn't like me. It's, the algorithm is a machine. It's never the algorithm's fault, it's you. Another great thing that I learned, and man, I, I really struggled with this one in the beginning, is keeping the main thing the main thing. And in my opinion, we face this YouTube channels with YouTube automation. The main thing is posting high quality content that people want to watch, right? A mistake that I've done in the beginning journey I would spend days and days trying to come up with a name with this crazy name that people would be, oh my God, what a name, oh my God, what a, what a channel, what a brand. But then I quickly realized that nobody cares about your name and it's not gonna make any difference in the amount of money that you make. If you just wanna start a faceless YouTube channel, make three, five, ten thousand dollars per month with it, just choose a name, do the artwork, put it out there, and go back to making high quality content that people wanna watch. All those other things, the tags, the description, the, the upload frequency, the upload times, the upload schedule, I used to spend the majority of my time on those, and I'm not saying they're not important, I think some of them are needed, you definitely need to do them, but they're not, they're definitely not the main thing. I was basically majoring in minors, which is not what you wanna do. Keeping the main thing the main thing will definitely get you further. Then, probably one of the most important lessons that I learned, and I was lucky to learn, was that the team is 80% of the business. The team guarantees the success or the failure in about 80% of the cases, and it's crucial to this business model. Now, if you guys don't already know, when we say faceless YouTube channel, there are three ways you can approach a faceless YouTube channel. Number one, you have the free method, in which you do all the content yourself. In that case, the team is pretty much you. You have the second method, which is the paid method, in which you choose to delegate the work to other people, freelancers on platforms like Upwork and Fiverr.com, and they do all the work for you. And then you also have the hybrid method, the third method, where you do some of the work yourself, maybe you write a script, maybe you do the thumbnail, and you choose to delegate the other parts, in this case, the voiceover and the video editing, right? So regardless of which of those methods you choose, the people are 80% of the business. What are you, the people that you delegate, or a combination between you and them, that will dictate the success or the failure of the channel. Because by now, I've probably seen the analytics and seen the stats and spoke with hundreds of people that have faceless channels. And the biggest outlier that I see with the channels that do the best, they all mention their team, right? It's like, oh my God, I have the best team. I have this guy who does this. I have da, 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 da. The team can really make a huge difference because if you, if you have a team of unexperienced people who have never done it before, who have no clue what they're talking about, and you're a beginner as well, then it's gonna be much, much harder to have success. And the chances of that succeeding in a short amount of time, or even in on any period of time, unless you guys get crazy better, is just low. And then on the other side, if you have a team of experienced people who are passionate about the channel that you want to do, and then you build a relationship with them, you treat them very well, you kind of almost become friends and you, you nurture that relationship, the chance of that channel working is so, so, so much higher. The collaboration is going to be so much more joyful. It's just, it's just night and day difference, right? I was even thinking when I was writing the outline for this video that I was so lucky and so fortunate that when I started my first channel, I found a video editor that's with me till this day. So over the last three years, that guy has edited videos for more than 10 of my channels, has purchased a new car for himself, built a mini office in his country where he has multiple people working on my videos and maybe some other videos as well. He knows exactly what I want, how I want it done, and saves me so, so, so much time. And then the same thing I've done with a voiceover actor. The same guy that started on that channel is still with me now, three years later, of course, I poured a lot into these guys in the beginning. I, I put into my journey, I, I did calls with them, I didn't treat them like, hey, I'm paying you for this video, give me the video, I'm paying you for this video, give me the video, here's the money, back and forth, whatever. I was like, hey, what are your goals? What is it that you want to do? Why do you like making those videos? Why do you want to be with me? How many clients do you ought to work? How can I be your best customer, right? If you have the chance to find very good quality people to do the work for you, Make sure that you do everything in your power to keep them, right? You don't want to churn through people. You don't want to go, okay, next one, next one, next one. The team is 80% of this business. Another major lesson that I learned is that you always need to keep testing. In the beginning stages of your journey, to find success and to find video formats that work, you need to test a lot, right? Like that, you have nothing on your channel, you need to post videos. Some of them will work, some of them will don't. That's just called testing. Eventually, once you find something that works, you want to double down, right? You want to make more of that thing. You want to make more of those videos, more of those styles, uh, more of those channels maybe but that testing that that startup mentality of like testing and failing and testing and failing kind of goes away and unfortunately for a couple of months 
I believe that, oh, I, I got this now. Like, I know what videos work. I know what niches work. I know what types of channels work. I don't need to test new videos, new formats. And I even ended up not testing a bunch of new channels because I was like, I'm already making money from these channels. Have the other business. I'm busy. I have a pack schedule. I don't want to kind of keep testing and dabbling. But that was a mistake. And it's a, it's a painful lesson that I learned. If you don't constantly test, if you don't constantly try to find a new thing, find a new angle, find something that works, whether that be a video, whether that be a niche, whether that be an angle, whether that be a channel, you need to constantly keep testing because a couple things are gonna happen if you don't. And again, I'm telling you this from my painful experience. Number one, you're gonna get rising competition and you're gonna have to pay a price of competing. Meaning, if you're the best one right now in your niche and in your market, if you kind of take the foot off the gas and say, I'm gonna chill, I'm gonna sail for the next three months, there's a high chance that if that's a good opportunity to get uh, or a good niche, somebody's gonna come along, see what you're doing, they're gonna model you, they're gonna add something a little bit better, and three months is, is time enough for them to kind of come and take over. Now they are the best, and you're gonna have to basically go foot on the gas acceleration mode again, to try to even compete with them, to try to get back to their level. Now, does this mean that people can just come in and kill your channel, kill your views, not make any money? No, you're still gonna make money if you do the, uh, a good job, you're still gonna probably make the same money even uh, if you have a good channel. But still, knowing that now there's somebody else who's making better videos than me or who has something that I don't know because I just wasn't paying attention is not the best thing and is not the case that you wanna do. And also, even if you have just one channel, and if you, if you got it working, if you got it making three, five, ten thousand dollars per month, definitely don't only double down on the things that are working and making you money, but always be open and always look for new ideas, new angles, stuff to test, because that will keep your channel always up to the market, up to the trends, and you will see what's happening, what's working, what's not working, and you don't want to get left behind. With that being said, you're probably watching this video at the end of December uh, 2023 or maybe even early 2024. I just want you guys to stay tuned because I'm going to be testing a bunch more things, a bunch more channels, and I'm going to document them all here on the channel. Until next time, don't get fancy, don't get cute. The work needs doing. Good luck to you.